We turn now to the Saudi Minister of State for Foreign Affairs, Adil al Jubair. It's good to have you here. It's a pleasure. One of the other reasons cited in this bipartisan legislation was the brutal murder of Jamal Khashoggi, uh, the Washington Post columnist back in October. Congress has set a date for the administration to make a determination about the culpability of the Crown Prince, Mohammed bin Salman. You met with Secretary of State Mike Pompeo this week. What did he tell you? The, uh, the death of uh, Jamal Khashoggi was a ma massive tragedy. It was a mistake. It was committed by officials of the Saudi government acting outside their scope of authority. The king in, uh, ordered an investigation. The investigation led to the arrest of a number of individuals. Those in, 11 of those individuals have been charged by the public prosecutor and the trials have begun. We have said we will investigate, we will hold those accountable, those responsible accountable, and we will punish them. And we will make sure that we have procedures in place to prevent something like this from happening in the future. That's what countries do when situations like this happen. The Crown Prince had nothing to do with this. There was no order given to murder Jamal Khashoggi. And, and the whole country is shocked by this. The trial is taking place. What I tell people is wait until the legal process plays out and then judge us. But don't judge us before the process is complete. Is that what the Secretary of State told you, that he agrees with your assessment that the Crown Prince had nothing to do with it? I believe that the positions of the President and the Secretary of State were very clear. They said that the evidence does, there is no evidence that points in that direction. They understand that there's a, that Saudi Arabia is serious about investigating and serious about being transparent in its investigation and serious about holding those responsible accountable. And this is what we're doing. The intelligence community, though, had a very different conclusion here. And after the CIA director briefed Congress on the details of what the CIA had found, the Senate then passed a bill saying undoubtedly the crown prince knew about what happened. I don't know what the CIA briefed them, but I don't I believe that the same briefing that the president and the secretary of state and the secretary of defense at the time received did not point in that direction. So I think there's a there's there may be emotions here, there may be exaggerations here, but the key, the point of it is, this was not a government sanctioned operation. This was an op this was people exceeding their authority and acting independently, and they would be punished for this. Have you been briefed on what the CIA determined? I personally have not, no. But we have uh, communications with them through intelligence channels. Exactly, and that intelligence relationship is one of the strongest assets of the work between our two countries. Um, so I know you would uh, think highly of the CIA and its assessment. Uh, when it comes to your own internal investigations, um, in October is when this murder happened. Yes. Where is Jamal Khashoggi's body? We don't know. What do you mean you don't know? We don't know. They said that the, uh, the public prosecutor is working to try to establish this fact. We have asked for evidence from Turkey, and he asked them several times formally through formal legal channels to provide evidence. We are still waiting to receive any evidence they may have. You're blaming the Turkish government? No, I'm blaming the murderers who committed this crime. You have them, you say, in custody, though? Yes. They can't tell you where the body is? We are still investigating. There, We have no, a number of, of uh, possibilities, and we're asking them what they did with the body, and I think this investigation is ongoing, and I would expect that eventually we will find the truth. And the family will be informed? Of course, the family will be informed. They have been informed of the charges that were brought against the perpetrators of this crime. They have been informed about the legal process that is underway, and they will be kept fully informed. They're the victims. The UN human rights expert who is investigating this on behalf of the international community, though, says that Saudi Arabia has seriously curtailed and undermined their efforts to investigate. That's not true. The uh, UN uh, rapporteur that you talked to is not engaged in the UN investigation. She is doing this on her own in her capacity as rapporteur of human rights. Mm -hmm. And she went to Turkey and she uh, came back and issued opinions that are her own. These are not United Nations opinions. But she wants to go to Saudi Arabia to investigate. Will she be allowed to? We believe that we have the means to do the investigation ourselves. We have competent investigators. We have competent uh, prosecutors. And we have a competent legal system. That sounds like a no. We, will, we, are in, we, we have cooperated with uh, other United Nations rapporteurs in terms of responding to their questions. But I think that uh, in this case, our legal system takes the lead. The New York Times has new reporting out, and I'm sure you've seen the story, detailing how U.S. intelligence intercepted communications of the Crown Prince telling a top aide in 2017 that he would, quote, use a bullet on Washington Post journalist Jamal Khashoggi if he did not return to the kingdom and end his criticism of the Saudi government. 
What was he talking about? I'm not going to comment on reports based on anonymous sources. We have seen many such reports in the, over the past two or three months that turned out to be incorrect, or that turned out to, that turned out to be incorrect, frankly. And so uh, I don't know this, this, the background. The Crown Prince, we know, did not order this. This was not a government-sanctioned operation. We have an investigation, and we have a trial. And uh, many things have been put out that turned out to be incorrect. The 11 messages between the Crown Prince and an aide that people that uh, that came from intelligence sources, uh, implying that this the exchange happened while the crime was being committed, turned out to be bogus. The exchanges had to do with other things. We investigated and we brought in a forensics firm and we sh shared the results with our friends and allies. Did the Crown Prince know of the murder? You're saying he didn't direct it. Of course not. Of course not. Nobody in Saudi Arabia knew about the murder except the people who did it. That's why when the team came back, we said. As far as we know, he left the consulate through the back door. Mm -hmm. It turned out to be false. And that's when the king asked for an investigation to be launched. The prosecution la launched the investigation. The public prosecutor determined that something went wrong, brought in the people who were in the mission, and basically started, detained them and questioned them and established that, yes, they did, in fact, murder him. But you realize, though, that there's a lot of skepticism that there would be this level of dissent to have that large number of people defy the monarch and the crown prince and carry out such a rogue operation. It's, uh, Oliver North was involved in Iran-Contra, and he thought that Ronald Reagan wanted this, and Ronald Reagan did not want this at all. Abu Ghraib, you had people abusing prisoners, and the president and the vice president and the secretary of state were not even aware of it. The, unfortunately, people make mistakes. Unfortunately, people exceed their authorities. Unfortunately, people do things wrong. We have done the right thing. We acknowledged that this happened. We acknowledged that these were officials of the Saudi government. We acknowledged that this, they had no authority to do this, and we jailed them, and now we're putting them on trial. Quickly, I want to ask you, um, Jeff Bezos, who owns Amazon and Washington Post, or I should say, Jeff Bezos, who founded Amazon and owns the Washington Post, is accusing AMI, which publishes the National Enquirer, um, for essentially trying to extort him with these incriminating photos. He personally said, though, that the Post's essential and unrelenting coverage of the murder, specifically of Khashoggi, was undoubtedly unpopular in certain circles. Did the Saudi government have anything to do with these leaks to AMI? Absolutely not. This sounds to me like a soap opera. I've been watching it on television and reading about it in the paper. This is something between the two parties. We have nothing to do with it. Well, can you say, though, that the Saudi government and any of its employees or its, you know, contractors that it works with definitively that they had no contact with David Pecker or AMI? That's as far as I'm aware, and I believe I would be aware, we have an absolutely nothing to do with this. We, maybe some of our citizens read the National Enquirer when they're in the United States, other citizens watch the soap opera unfold on television, but that's it. Well, it's a Extraordinary charge. Um, Adel, thank you very much for coming on and answering questions. Pleasure. We appreciate thank you. having you here. Thank you.